Welcome to The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetective. If you have a superhero fan in your life, I encourage you to pick up a copy of Tales of the Dim Night by another day, Powerhouse Hard Pressed or Speed Trap. They're the books in my superhero comedy novel series, The Adventures of Powerhouse. They are available as a paperback. You can also get them for your own use as either an ebook or audiobook through Audible.com or the iTunes Store. And all of my books, audiobooks, and ebooks are available at store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Boston Blackie, the original air date on this, December the 10th of 1946, and this one is Mary's Patient Commits Suicide. What's the matter, Ed? Can't you find a telephone number? Yeah, yeah, here it is. Under registered nurses, Sam. Wesley Mary, RN. 1019 Dale Avenue, Plaza 10610. Oh, good, good. Plaza 10610. You're sure she'll be all right, Sam? Well, she'll have to be. Hospital says she's the only registered nurse available for a private case right now. Well, we certainly have to have a nurse. Yeah, it's too risky without one. Gotta get this Wesley girl. Hello? Uh, Miss Wesley. Yes? You're the Miss Wesley who's a registered nurse? Well, yes, I am, but I haven't been on a case in a long time. Well, this is urgent, Miss Wesley. This is Dr. Sam Jones. Your friend Dr. Wallace has had to leave town, and I'm handling a case for him. Well, Dr. Jones, I think you'd better get someone else. I think that Dr. Wallace will tell you he hasn't used me. Yeah, yes, I, I know he told me that, Miss Wesley, but he also told me that you're an excellent nurse, and this is an emergency. Now, I've tried everywhere, and you're... Just about the only registered nurse available, so if you'd please, Miss Wesley. Well, it's, it's been a long time, Dr. Jones, but if you think... I'm I... quite certain you'll have no difficulty with this case, Miss Wesley, so could you come on duty this evening? Oh, it looks like I don't have much choice, do I, Doctor? <laughs> well, fine. The, the address is 10 Eastern Boulevard. It's a private house. The name is Rogers... Oh, uh, well, now, just a minute. Rogers, 10 Eastern Boulevard. All right, Doctor, and what time do you want me? Eight o'clock, please. I'll be there. Thank you very much, Miss Wesley. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Sam, what you say? She'll be here, Ed, at eight o'clock. Yeah. She fell for the Dr. Wallace angle and everything. This is going to be easy. And now, on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend. To those who have no friends. Good evening. I'm Mary Wesley. Oh, yes. Come right in, Miss Wesley. Uh, you're the nurse Dr. Jones sent for. Yes, I am. Well, I'm Ed Rogers, the patient's brother. How do you do, Mr. Rogers? Is your brother very ill? He was hit by an automobile yesterday. Good heavens. Why isn't he in the hospital? He was, but I thought he'd be more comfortable here. Dr. Jones equipped a room here with all the necessary hospital facilities. Uh, Dr. Jones is with my brother now. Are you ready to go to work? Oh, yes, of course. I'll take your coat. All right, thank you. Yeah. There. Uh, my brother's room is that first door off the hall there. Oh, uh, thank you very much. My brother's sleeping, I think. Just go right in, Miss West. I will. Um... Dr. Jones? Yes, I'm Dr. Jones. Uh, you must be Miss Wesley. Yes, I am. How is the patient? He's uh, resting comfortably. I've had to administer a sedative to make him sleep. His injuries are rather painful, but not serious. That's why I thought it would be quite safe to move him here to his home. Well, from the looks of this room, I'd swear I was in a hospital, Doctor. It looks like a hospital room right down to the last detail. Yes, yes, it does, doesn't it? Uh, uh, about the patient, Miss Wesley... There's little you have to do for him but watch over him tonight. I don't think he'll wake up until morning. I see, Doctor. But when he does wake up in the morning, please telephone me. Oh, well, just a moment, if you'll excuse me. I'll get a piece of paper. Uh, on the night table over there? Uh, oh, yes, thank you. 
The number is Harrison 49767. Um, mm, 49767. Yes, I have. All right. I live just two blocks from here, so I'll come right over. And you want to be called the moment he wakes up. I understand, Doctor. Fine, fine. Well, good night, Miss Wesley, and thank you very much for making yourself available. Well, I was very glad to be able to do it. Good night. Good night, Miss Wesley. Sam, is everything all right so far? Will she do what you asked her to do? She's a nurse, Ed. She thinks I'm a doctor. <laughs> She'll do what I ask her to do. Great. Now what? Well, your brother won't come out from under the hypo that you shot into his arm until sometime tomorrow morning. Hmm. Then we'll get what we want. Nurse. Nurse. I'm right here, Mr. Rogers. Good morning. Get me the doctor. I want to see the doctor. All right, I will, but now you just lie still. I'll get the doctor right away. Yes. Yes, get me the doctor. R right away, please. Um, Mr. Rogers. Uh, yes, nurse. Is my brother awake? Uh, yes, he is, and I'm supposed to call the doctor right away. Where is your telephone? Right there in the library, Miss Wesley. All right, thank you, and maybe you better go in and stay with your brother until I get back. Yes. Yes, I think I will go in and see him. Fine, I'll be right back. Nurse? Nurse, did you, did you get the doctor? The doctor will be here in a minute, Bill. Oh, it's you, Ed. Hmm. Get out of here. Now, take it easy, Bill. Take it Get easy. No, no, get away from my bed. I don't want you near me. All I want to do is to see the doctor. You'll see him, Bill, in just a minute. No, no, I won't. Not with you here. You were here at the hospital the last time I called for a doctor, and you stuck a needle in my arm. It was a drug. It put me to sleep. I've, I've got to talk to the doctor. Uh, do you? Why? I'm, I'm sorry, Ed, but I have to do it. Even if you are my brother... Well, all right. Whatever it is you have to say to him, you go right ahead and say it. I know you wouldn't do anything you didn't have to, so you go right... Oh, here's the doctor. Well, Mr. Rogers, I just dropped in as the nurse was calling me. How are you feeling this morning? A lot better? No. Oh, no, just about the same, doctor. Uh, say, you're not the doctor I had yesterday. Well, no, I'm not, son. Uh, Dr. Wallace was called out of town. I'm Dr. Jones, taking Dr. Wallace's place for a few days. Oh, well... All right, you, you'll do. I I want to talk to you, Doctor. Alone. Alone? Uh, well, all right. Uh, maybe you'd better go outside with Miss Wesley, uh, Mr. Rogers. Oh, sure, sure. Anything you say, Dr. Jones. Is he... Is he gone? Yes, yes, he's gone, Mr. Rogers. Now, what is all this business you have to talk to me about alone? It's about Ed, Dr. Jones. You see, Ed and I... Both work for the Acre Manufacturing Company. Yes, yes, I know. But but you don't know this. Nobody knows this but me. That's why Ed tried to kill me by running me down with his car yesterday. What's that? Uh, you say your brother Ed was the one who ran uh, you down? Oh, now, come, come, Mr. Rogers. You don't really mean that. Oh, but, but I do mean it, Doctor. I saw the car just before it hit me. I know it was Ed's. He, he tried to kill me because I... I know he's embezzled thousands of dollars from the company we work for. I, I, I was on my way to the police after, after I told Ed I could prove everything. That's why he tried to kill me before I could get to them. You can prove your brother is an embezzler? Yes. Yes, the, the phony checks are made out in payment of, of false invoices from the A.H. Latimer Company, which doesn't even exist. Oh, and... And the checks are cashed at the, the Harrington Bank. <laughs> Isn't that proof I, I know what I'm talking about? Well, if what you say is true, it certainly is. But uh, uh, why are you telling me all this? I, I want you to write out what I just told you. Bring it to me and, and I'll sign it. You've got to do it, Doctor. And then you've, you've got to take it to the police. Please, Doctor. Very it's well, a... very well. Now, you just take it easy. I'll have my secretary type up the statement for you to sign. Yes. Yes. Please hurry, Doctor, before my brother does something to me again. Don't worry. You'll be all right. How is he, Doctor? Ed, your brother's going to be all right. Uh, Miss Wesley. Yes, Doctor? Our patient is a little overexcited this morning. I think we'd better put him to sleep again. Will you administer the opiate, please? Of course, Doctor. No uh, more than the... Usual amount, miss. Certainly not, Doctor. Doctor? 
No, no, I'm Miss Wesley, the nurse. Oh, oh, is the doctor coming back? He hasn't even gone. He's just outside in the hall. Uh, now, um, you aren't a sissy about a hypodermic needle, are you? No, oh, but, but what are you going to do? Well, Dr. Jones wants you to go to sleep for a little while, that's all. Now, this won't hurt one bit. I, I won't go to sleep right away, will I? No, not for 10 or 15 minutes yet. Oh, that's good. I, I must sign something first. Yes. Oh. There, there, now it's all done. You feel better, don't you? Yes. That's a lot better, nurse. Oh, that's good. Now, you just lie still, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, uh, doctor, he seems to be feeling very much better since he talked to you. Yes, nurse, I think he's going to be all right now. Uh, you gave him the hypodermic? Yes, he should be asleep in about 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Miss Wesley, Mr. Rogers here will pay you for your services. I don't think we'll need you anymore. You... You, you don't need me anymore, The but... patient seems completely out of danger now. But, but Thank doctor, you very I... much for your troubles, Miss Wesley, and goodbye. But, Blackie, I tell you, there's something very strange going on in that house. Oh, now, Mary, what are you trying to do? Stir up excitement? No, Blackie, please believe me. I've never been on a case that was so strange. The room in that house was fixed to look like a hospital room, exactly like one, even to the color of the walls and the curtains on the and uh, the floor and, and all the hospital room equipment. So maybe there used to be an invalid in the house. Well, all right, maybe there was. But you don't fix up a room to look like a hospital room for an invalid. You want the room to look home-like. Hmm, you may have something there with that. Well, maybe they wanted your patient to think he was still in a hospital. Well, I guess that must be it. But what about the way Dr. Jones let me go? Just after I gave the hypodermic to the patient. I've never been discharged from a case so abruptly in all my life. You gave the patient a hypodermic and then the doctor discharged you just like that, huh? Not two minutes after I gave the hypo. Just like that. Oh, Blackie, that just isn't done. Please, please, let's go down there and see if everything is all right. Well, I think you're being unduly suspicious, Mary, but if it'll make you feel any better, we'll go down there and see what's what. But when we find out everything's all right, I want you to remember something. What? Please don't think every case for you has the possible making of a case for me. <laughs> well, Ed, I guess we can pat ourselves in the back, huh? No, we sure can, Sam. Uh, 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 Dr. Jones to you. Oh, no, no, that's the end of that. <laughs> I uh, won't be needing your services any longer. And I don't think that my dear brother will either. <laughs> <laughs> we, we worked this out rather cleverly, I think. Uh, that embezzlement can't possibly be traced to you in any way now. No, Sam, I'm in the clear. My only link to what's happened is uh, you. Huh? And you've been paid. So now suppose you get out of here and uh, get lost. Here's the house, Blackie. 10 Eastern Boulevard. Some house, Mary. The Rogers must have a lot of money. Yeah, they sure must have, judging by what Ed Rogers paid me for one night's duty. But come on, let's go see if that patient is still all right. I'll guarantee he is. I think I'll get out your side. Okay. I hope you're right, Blackie. I know I am. You've just been around me so long that you're starting to look for trouble, too. Mm, maybe. Hey, what's that lying up there in the driveway? Well, I don't know, but it looks like... Hey, Mary, a... it's a man. Come on. A man? Blackie, look. Look, the third story up there. A window's open. And look at this man here, Mary. He looks as if he's fallen at least three stories. I've looked. He's dead, isn't he? Very. You know who he was? Yes, Blackie, I do. It was Bill Rogers, the patient I was worried about. And you said that nothing was going to happen here, Blackie. Yes, and I was right. Nothing is going to happen here, Mary. It already has. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. In addition to being Boston Blackie's best friend, Mary Wesley is a registered nurse. As such, she is called in on a case in a private home. The patient, injured when hit by an automobile, speaks privately to a man he thinks is his doctor and reveals that his brother is a swindler. When Mary is released from duty suddenly, she becomes suspicious and returns to the home with Boston Blackie, only to find the patient dead from a suicide leap out the window. As we return to our story, Blackie is in Inspector Faraday's office. I tell you, Faraday, Bill Rogers didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. Oh, so he was murdered, was he, Blackie? 
Just what makes you think so? I just think so, that's all. Mary was the nurse on that case, and she's convinced there was something very wrong going on there. Oh, I suppose she was there when Rogers was uh, murdered. No, huh? she left the case at 9 o'clock this morning. 9 o'clock? Then what makes her think Rogers was murdered? According to the coroner's report, Rogers didn't die until almost 1 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, even I know that, Faraday. Mary and I found his body just a little after 1. I could tell that he'd been dead only a few minutes. But I still say it wasn't suicide. Oh, it wasn't, huh? Well, suppose I show you a suicide note. You can't do it because there can't be one. Why not? Because according to what Mary tells me, the guy was in good spirits when she saw him last, and he had no reason to kill himself. Well, if what you say is true, uh, maybe it is murder after all. Then you'll investigate Roger's brother and that Dr. Jones Mary told me about? You think they killed him, huh, Blackie? Maybe. They were still in the house with Roger's when Mary left. I think they ought to be questioned. Well, if you think they ought to be questioned, I ought to question them, I guess. Faraday, what's going on here? You're too agreeable this afternoon. Am I? Well, I have something here that isn't going to be so agreeable. You know Bill Rogers didn't kill himself because there's no suicide note. Well, what do you call this, a love letter? What is it? A statement admitting he embezzled money from the Acre Manufacturing Company, ending with the sentence, there's nothing to do now but kill myself. And it's signed by William Rogers. What? Let me see that. Go ahead. Look at it. I'm looking at it. Well, how do you know this is Bill Rogers' signature? Because we checked on it, and it is. Oh, so, Bill Rogers was an embezzler, huh? Well, guess he did kill himself after all. So long. <laughs> so you thought you could tell me something about this case, huh? Yes, and I still <laughs> think so. And what's more, I'm going to prove it. Hello, Sam. Ed, you fool. I thought we weren't supposed to see each other again. What are you doing here at my home? This is important, Sam. No one saw me come here. That part's all right. Everything's all right, isn't it? Your brother's dead. He signed a confession against himself instead of a statement against you. Sam, there's one flaw in our plan. One thing wrong with it that can send us to prison for murder. One flaw. One flaw? Well, what? You ought to know what. Just think a minute. Uh, yes, yes, you're right, Ed. You're right. Of course I'm right. Rather stupid of us, wasn't it? But no one will ever know about it. No. What about Miss Wesley? If she's any kind of a nurse, she'll find the hole in our plan. Yes, yes, I guess you're right. Sam, who are you phoning? Our friend, Miss Wesley. I think we'd better bring her down here and have a little talk with her. Find out what she knows, huh? Yes, and see that she doesn't tell anyone what that is. Listen to this. Our friend, Dr. Wallace, is back in town now. I've checked with the hospital. I'm going to try and imitate his voice. Huh? Hello? <clears throat> Miss Wesley? Yes? Uh, Miss Wesley, this is Dr. Wallace. Oh, hello. I just got back, Miss Wesley, and I have a case for you this evening. It's an emergency. Oh, Doctor, I'd much rather not. I'm haven't... sorry, Miss Wesley. This is urgent. It's at 1919 Downey Street. The name is Adams. Now, how how soon can you be here? All right. I can leave right away. Oh, that's fine. I'll try to get there then, too. Thank you a lot, Miss Wesley, and goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Wallace. Well, it's all arranged, Ed. She thought I was Wallace. She's coming here. Fine. But then what? What are we going to do then? What are we going to do? Yeah. Well, it was a simple matter to throw your brother out of an upstairs window when he was asleep. It should be easier to do the same thing to Miss Wesley. She isn't even a relative. Good evening, Harry. Uh, Taking good care of Miss Wesley's building these days? Hi, sure, Blackie. But say, Miss Wesley isn't in this evening. Isn't in? No. She's got to be. We have a date for 7.30 this evening. Yeah, I know. She tried to phone you, but you were out. So she told me to tell you that when she got here, see? Told me what? Well, she's been called out on another case for Dr. Wallace. She says you could reach her at 1919 Downey Street if you wanted to talk to her. Another case for Dr. Wallace? Yeah. There's something crazy going on here. Dr. Wallace doesn't use Mary more than twice a year, and then all of a sudden he uses it twice in 24 hours. Look, I'm going to use the phone in your lobby. All right, go right ahead, Blackie. Go right ahead. Watch my car for me, will you? Oh, you're leaving it in good hands, Blackie. Don't worry. It's all right, just where it is. Hope I can get him. Papa Pete. Uh, Dr. Wallace speaking. Hello, Dr. Wallace. This is Boston Blackie. Well, hello, Blackie. And how's that lovely Miss Wesley these days? You ought to know, Doctor. You're keeping her pretty busy all of a sudden. What's the idea? I'm Blackie, why, I haven't seen her for a long time. 
You haven't called Mary on two cases in the last 24 hours? No, no, of course not. Uh, look, Doctor, I have a hunch about something. Maybe you can clear it up. Mary gave a patient a hypo to put him to sleep at 9 o'clock this morning. How long would that drug keep him out? Well, if it was the drug normally given in cases like that, the hypothermic would have kept him asleep for at least two, six to eight hours. Six to eight hours, huh? Thanks, Dr. Wallace. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Faraday, you better be in your office this time. You've just got to be. But you've got to listen to me, too. Faraday speaking. Uh, Faraday, this is Blackie. Oh, hello, Blackie. You make any more wrong guesses today? Look, Faraday, never mind the funny stuff. Listen to me and listen fast. I've got absolute proof now that Bill Rogers was murdered. What? That again? Yes, that again. Never mind how I know. All I want you to do is to get to 1919 Downey Street with a police car fast. Mary's in trouble. Get there as fast as you can. I'm closer than you, and I'm leaving now. But you hurry, too, will you? All right, Mikey, I'll hurry. But if this is another one of your tricks, so help me out. Never mind about helping me, Faraday. Get down there to Downey Street and help Mary. She needs it. Get for doing 60. Oh, nuts. Now, just where do you think you're going in such a hurry? Uh, look, officer, I'm Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie, huh? <laughs> well, uh, so you are at that. Oh, swell, I'm glad you know who I am. Look, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, so I noticed. But it's important, <laughs> officer. I, I've got to get somewhere fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what they all say. But I tell you, this is important. Let me go and then check with Inspector Faraday. He'll tell you all about it. Oh, oh, check with Inspector Faraday, shall I? <laughs> well, I've heard a lot about you and the inspector, and it hasn't been good. Well, this time it's all right. Just call his office and he'll... And he'll what? And he won't do anything. If he's doing what I asked him to do, he's not in his office. Oh, he's not in his office, is he? <laughs> well, now, isn't that too bad? Because you're going to stay right here with me until he is. Well, Miss oh. Wesley again. What a surprise. And Dr. Jones again. This is indeed a surprise. Well, not too much, Miss Wesley. I handle a great many of Dr. Wallace's cases. Oh? Come in, won't you? Thank you. Um, where is the patient? Well, we'll see him in a moment, Miss Wesley. I, um, I've been thinking about the Rogers case. I, I've been wondering if you were aware of anything unusual about it. Well, yes, in a way I was, but, uh, nothing, nothing, uh, specific. You, uh, don't think Bill Rogers killed himself? Do well, uh, the police seem satisfied, and, and Blackie... Oh, yes, yes, your, your friend Blackie. You told him all about it, I imagine. Oh, yes, I did. Did you uh, tell Blackie that you administered a hypo to the patient at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning? Yes. Well, now, uh, think a minute, Miss Wesley. You uh, know something about drugs, don't you? Well, enough to administer them. Well, then, Miss Wesley, you uh, ought to realize something. Why oh, should What? You administered the drug at 9 o'clock. Bill Rogers, an injured man, supposed to be asleep, climbed two stories and threw himself out of a third-story window at 1 o'clock, four hours later. Is that possible? Oh, I know. Of course it isn't. Dr. Jones, Mr. Rogers was murdered. He'd have to be. He was asleep when he died. Look, we, we've got to tell the police right away. No, I, I don't think we ought to do that, Miss Wesley. Why not? If you'd pushed Bill Rogers out the window... Would you want to tell the police? If I... You killed Mr. Rogers, didn't you? Yes, but you won't oh, be I... talking to the police because, well, you recognize a hypodermic needle when you see one, I'm no, sure, I... and this one contains no, no, the help. same drug we help, gave Bill please, Rogers. Help somebody, please, please. Oh, thank goodness for you, whoever you are. Look, look, this man is... Oh. Know who I am, Miss Wesley? Yes, I do, you're... Your Ed, All right. Roger's brother. Grab her, Ed. Yeah, no. Give her this hypo, no. and then she'll go out and up no, to the window, too. Help. I've got Let her. Go Miss Wesley, don't, don't struggle don't. that way. It won't do any good. Really, it won't. Stop it. Stop it. I don't no. think they will, Mary. Let the lady go, you guys, and just stand right where you are till a few of my friends get here. Oh, Blackie, I'm Duck, Mary, one of those guys has a gun. Look out, officer. He's the one to look out. Oh. Good shooting, officer. 
Now I'll get his gun. Yeah, see that you do that, Blackie, while I keep an eye on my gun on these two bums. Why don't you relax? I'm not going to move. Here's our friend's gun, officer. Okay, thanks. Hey, lady, you all right? Yes, thank you, officer. I am now, anyway. Oh, Blackie. Do you know I'm so glad to see you I could give you a great big kiss? (laughs) Well, give the kiss to my friend, the policeman here. If he hadn't believed you were my dying grandmother, he'd still be bawling me out for speeding. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Interesting to have an episode that centers around Mary's profession. And there are clever elements in the criminal schemes, but it's really undermined by them not being that bright from the get-go. Obviously, this crook isn't very well informed or he would never have hired boston blackie's friend as the nurse even if they couldn't find any other nurse to do the job and then the transparent way they tried to get mary back in that just yeah turn this into a mess so it's less boston blackie defeats the bad guys than it is the bad guys really defeat themselves 
All right, well, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. And then next Thursday, it's another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.